Thanks, Joe. Got a massive show tonight. Got two big exclusives. This time last yes. week it was all about Toby Green yep. and the incident. Well, tonight we've obtained the exclusive CCTV vision. We'll show exactly what went on with that young man in the Ooh. Caulfield pub. Also, speaking of exclusive, a secret meeting between the Essendon players and their parents and the footy club. All about the Asada investigation. Only one. Media man was there, and that was Damien Barrett with his camera. We'll give you all of those details. Yeah, big night for Damo. Also, we cross live to Ordinga, which is about 45 k's south of Adelaide. Mm. Shane Crawford trained today. Mm. He makes his comeback on the weekend. We've got Croft live, of course. And while I'm talking about that part of the world, Gary, yeah, Australia's know. first ever nude beach. I don't like it too. And our man, the superstar that is the enforcer, has gone and done street talk that finished on the nude beach. He had nothing on. No, no. So go. No. An extraordinary exit. <laughs> yes. We're sort of looking forward to that, Jim. Yes. We'll have to wait until after 9.30. Also, we celebrate big milestones in the game better than we ever yep. have before. And tonight, we are making history because one man is going to be here for the 200th time we will celebrate. Bill Brownless. Oh. 200. Pretty show. Yes, and talking about big, mm -hmm. they get no bigger in Hollywood than Hugh Jackman. He went one-on-one -on -one this week with our man Gary Lyon. <laughs> and is he happy about no, it? You should see him. <laughs> He's strutting around like no, a peacock. I'm not sure. That the uh, promo went with world exclusive, yes, Jim. I'm is. not sure it was a world exclusive. He didn't exclusive. speak to any other Gary Lyons. But, but it was great to catch up with him. We've got a massive show. Let's get started. So the millions watching at home, great to have you on the footy show. We need the panel involved and we're only going to get two of them out because a special entrance is coming. But this man plays unbelievable football for the Essendon Footy Club. Make Dyson Heppel welcome on the footy show. <laughs> And the Premiership superstar from Hawthorne is missing a bit of footy with injury, but we love him when he comes here, Josh Gibson. Very nice to have them. As Jim said, we're saving a special entrance Ooh. at the top of the second segment for the milestone man tonight. But Gibbo, I love it to see you. You haven't done your leg, mate. Could you walk any slower down the catwalk there? <laughs> it's, like, it's taken it all in, mate. It's very exciting. So now, uh, give us the update, please, on the pectoral muscle that you tore against the Sydney Swans up there in Sydney. And is having you out. You've had surgery. You're out now for eight to ten. Yeah, had surgery a week ago now and um, just tore the ligament off and had that replaced on the uh, bicep. So, um, yeah, out for 8 to 10, but just got to suck it up and enjoy rehab now, I guess. Now, the reason I haven't introduced our next oh. man is he's getting dressed, Jim. He wanted yes. to come out in the nude, but <laughs> I said, did. no, go and put your clothes <laughs> back on, he? please. You can't do that here on prime time. Please welcome the 300-game superstar from Geelong, John Sammy Newman. Yes, <laughs> I've actually seen the, uh, the unpixelated version and you're bragging if you reckon that's what it looked like <laughs> on the beach. At, uh, <clears throat> when you go to Eldinger, you do as the Eldingers do. <laughs> and you go on to Maslin nude. And uh, I underestimated the sea breeze coming off the... <laughs> <laughs> coming off the isthmus there, or was it the inlet? Mm. And I, my head went numb. And um, <laughs> did it? It did, and I had a little baby? nasal drip as well. And um, <laughs> other than that, uh, my great question is: having done it, uh, why would anyone want to go to a beach with their clothes off? Well, well, now that is, that is, that uh, is, and there was a bloke there who took a, had had a, not his iPhone. He had a camera. He was nude, and he took a photo of me. And I walked over to interview him, and he said, "Hey, no, no photo, no camera." And I said. 
No camera, you've just taken a photo of it. I said, why have you got your camera on a nude beach? That's it. What was his answer? No, he just uh, he just said he liked to take shots of nature and stuff. A hey, um, force. <laughs> I was with Gary when we saw the vision. I think you did an unbelievable job, but it appeared to me as the vision went on that it was sort of retreating a touch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I specifically, in case there was any, um, in case there was any strumpets there, or, oh. or, or, or good, or oh. good. Good yes. talent, men or women. Mm -hmm. I uh, yeah. I got some um, a, a, a relaxant, so <laughs> it, I got a relaxant, a so relaxant. it wouldn't suddenly burgeon, <laughs> and I'd be embarrassed. So it got smaller and smaller until it ended up going back into me. So <laughs> I'm not sure what the relaxant was, but it did a marvellous yeah. job, Samuel. Now yeah. uh, you you don't want to miss this. We're not building yep. this up. This is the most extraordinary street talk I've ever seen. So well done to you, just taking one for the team. Hey, get over. If I can just get back to you, mate. Uh, you headed off overseas uh, straight after the game. Now, there was a little bit of controversy. Did you know at that stage that you'd done something as serious as you had? No, well, I heard it in the third quarter and uh, we assessed it at the time and thought I just had a bit of a corky. So, played out the game and had a look in the morning and it, and it looked okay and so off I went and um, I was away till I left over there Monday night was when I was always coming home and when I got back we thought we'd just have a scan because it, it improved but was still a little bit stiff and uh, very surprised when I was driving home to find out that I'd torn the uh, tendon off. Is there anyone we could single out that made contact with you that we could suspend just for injuring you? Or? <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was Big Tippett, so yeah, it was, uh, it was his shoulder I think I ran into, so... Oh, well, he should Bobby be out. up for review because yeah. he's actually hurt someone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Gibbo, we understand the attraction uh, of the uh, flight to LA, especially the photos you sent to us. Um, here's your beautiful better half uh, interviewing Leonardo, Leonardo oh, okay. DiCaprio and then uh, Matthew McConaughey. We can walk through them all, but uh, Pharrell. But um, how long has uh, this relationship been going, please, uh, Josh? Uh, about six months. So. There's Hugh Hefner. Yep. Yeah, she's popped by the Playboy Mansion, doing a bit of work there, obviously. But Renee Barge, we should Renee, give yes, you Renee yes. Barge. Yes, Renee Barge, yep. of course. Yes, yeah, so it's been going about six months, mate. Right? What do you want to know, JV? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Eyes, I'm what do we want little... to know? We want to know the lot, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know you were going out with her. Oh, oh dear. What, go, mate, when did you, how did you meet her? I met her a few years ago. What? When I was, a few years ago when I was over in America, Sam. Well, where, where? In LA. What, what, what sort of venue or...? It was at dinner. <laughs> and who, oh, how did you get invited to it? Uh, Come on. I was... You might know Mitch Catlin from Swiss. Yes, he uh, yes. was overseas with him and... He invited a couple of friends out for dinner and... Uh, My word. There it was. There it <laughs> was, was mate. It took me a couple of years to chase heading back to LA pretty quick, oh, smart. I'm hey, surprised he came back there. Give you played against um, uh, your old mate, of course, your great mate, Buddy Franklin. Now, am I correct in saying there's a little bit of text exchange between the two of you? Luke Darcy suggested that uh, Bud might have sent you a text saying he was looking forward to lining up on you. Now, is that correct? Uh, he might have... Might have sent me a text. We always text one another. I'm not too sure where this is going. Yeah. Right? And am I correct in saying you sent one back and saying that I'm unlikely to play on you? I usually take the best forward in the opposition team. <laughs> <No. laughs> uh, look, there's a bit of banter. I don't know if that's exactly how it was worded, but um, I'm sure at some stage that text message might have snuck out and he might have sent one back telling me how he's going to kick, how many he's going to kick on me. And that is exactly how it went, Gibbo. Don't uh, joke. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it did line up on him for a short period of time. It's only. Uh, just the one, I reckon, contest that we could find, and he went back and slotted it. Was there much yap going on out there between the uh, Hawks and their former teammate? <laughs> no, there wasn't too much. Um, you know, we really respect him as a player, so we're all just trying to do our job, and we were under a fair bit of pressure that night, so I didn't really have much time to be yakking at him. He had the teeth whitened to touch Gibbo? <laughs> <laughs> Since we've last no. seen you, have you had a dusting of white I'm on those? I have not had or? my teeth whitened. They look white. <laughs> It just looks like you've had a bit of work done with them, that's all. No, I haven't. No, no work. Well, you have told us uh, not the whole truth on here before, so I thought we'd better find out. I've not had my teeth whitened, JB. <laughs> I can look you in the eyes and say <laughs> that that is all natural. Hey, speaking yeah. of great men, what about Dyson Heppel, everybody? He's been good enough to come out. things with you? you? Had the buy? Did we get home to Leon Gather? What was uh, on the agenda? Oh, the latest. Uh, no, actually uh, <laughs> took Kate up to Byron Bay for a few days. Oh, so uh, she's got away for a bit, which was nice. She's nice here tonight. Nice, yeah, oh, we took Kate Beautiful Turner. Kate Turner. Yeah, uh, she's nice and romantic out there, Dice. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Out for dinner. 
No schoolies around? No, no, it's no. no. Early in the year Took it me. easy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. I, I spoke to Kate and I said, did Dyson take you out for a nice romantic meal while you're up there? And she said, yes, he did. He took me to the kebab shop. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right, no, Dyson? Those old Bay kebabs, they're the <laughs> finest kebabs. <laughs> <in Australia. laughs> uh, a few cheeky ones at the Beach Hotel, down for a kebab. That's it. You can't go wrong. What about your side, the Bombers? <laughs> just, uh, just limping to the line a little Sheesh. bit at the moment, mate. We're going to talk to Damien about it a little bit later and we'll ask you how uh, Tuesday night went. I mean, it's difficult circumstances, but you're struggling a bit, the boys. Yeah, we are. I suppose, you know, after a fantastic start to the season, played some great footy and, um, you know, we haven't been able to hit that early season form again. But, um, you know, we're working at things and hopefully it'll, it'll change for the better soon. Love this bit of vision. Oh, sorry, Sam. No. Boss, what have you got? No, great. Great a standard line. That's <laughs> why Stay aren't back. you going as well? What can you put your finger on something you're not doing oh. now that you were doing earlier, Dyson? No, I think I'll throw up. Um, <laughs> we, well, we, probably a, a, around our ball movement, Sam. Um, we haven't been no, risky yeah. enough with the ball. We're probably too conscious of taking care of the ball yet. We're trying to move it forward and. Um, we haven't been doing that lately. So, so. so you see the ball as an opportunity to fail rather than to succeed. Well, if you want to put it like that, <laughs> that's fair oh, I, 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 could, well, I couldn't care maybe, less how um, I put it. That's, <laughs> that's, what, that's what you think. Maybe force an idea with the ball is to not kick it into people's heads, Dice, because we did <laughs> see this one here. <laughs> you have applied a Sharon straight into the head of Craig Bird. Look at this. Bird, he had a bit of it, so I thought I'd line him up. <laughs> well played. That is a significant falcon. Great falcon, isn't it? Hey, yeah, we had your mum here uh, in our Mother's Day special there a while back, uh, Dyson. She brought some photos in, which we loved having a look at. And there's you in a little Hawaiian <laughs> shirt number. And, um, oh, dear. Some of your best work. No, that is putrid. Gary isn't it? branded you ugly to your mum. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair game, Gaz. I was a stinking looking kid, so <laughs> that's fair enough. But to tell you what, Gaz, at least, mate, at least Hello. I was a happy kid, hey? Ah, yeah. At least I was a happy kid, not yes. a grumpy bastard like you. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> No. That's not Gaz. Oh, <laughs> Look at that. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't throw Fair stones. Fair oh, we need to get stuck into the uh, footy. You, you're wondering where the third panel member is. He's not far away. Oh, he's and, inside. Oh, I'll tell you what, this is his biggest ever entrance. Ever. Ever entrance. So he's coming. Let's get stuck into the footy. Collingwood take on the West Coast Eagles. Saturday at the MCG and the Maggies look like this. They're coming off a rare defeat this season. They've been very good. Brown is an interesting in. Nath Brown has found it hard to get a game in this uh, very good side, but he comes back in for solo as well. Uh, expected to bounce back hard against the West Coast Eagles. <laughs> Haven't beaten. You can see that. The Pies at the MCG since the mid-90s. Hill comes in. Kennedy was unbelievable. Kicking 11, of course. Uh, and before I get the thoughts of the boys on this game, congratulations to Dane Beams, who plays game number 100. Uh, Coleman, uh, sorry, a Copeland Trophy winner and a very, very good player. So, Dane Beams, it's well done. Worthy of a round of applause. Yeah, worthy of a round of applause. Absolutely. <laughs> Kimo, what do you think? Uh, mate, I think uh, Collingwood are going to come out firing. Obviously, Cloakie's copped a fair bit in the media this week, and I think he's going to kick a bag, and um, I'm going to back Collingwood. Ooh, all right. Uh, yeah. Guys. Yeah. I think uh, I'm going to go with Gibbo as well. I think the Pies will be too strong. Um, they've got an outstanding midfield and I think they'll get on top. West Coast are coming off a 111 point smashing last week, or well, two weeks ago in actual fact, because they had the buy of the GWS. Got big forwards in form there, Foss, MCG. Yep. Uh, who did they uh, smash by? GWS. Yes. Um, <laughs> Mid-90s, they haven't beaten Collingwood. Mind you, they've only played them twice since then at the MCG. Um, I'm hoping the West Coast will win because I've got a bet with... I've got a bet with Dane Swan. I could have been oh, hasty yes, saying yes. that they wouldn't make the eight, but I think the pies will be certainties. Well, I'd be, tip uh, uh, I'd be picking out <laughs> the font for the tattoo that's going to go on your backside, uh, Fossil. That's how well the pies are going. I think they'll win. So uh, there you are. Now, listen. What we need to tell you is that next Wednesday night is a massive night oh, on the yes. Nine Wet uh, Network. Now, first up at 7.30. This is next Wednesday. State of Origin live from Suncorp Stadium. This is one of the biggest sporting events of the, the year, regardless. Coming local footy story that you do not want to miss. There it is. That's next Wednesday night from 7.30 on the Mighty Nine Network. You get State of Origin followed by the one and only footy show. Yes, ladies, it's going to be huge. I'll tell you what, we are just getting started here on the footy show. We've got massive stories to come. We've got nudity and Big Bill not far away. Tonight, slide on in. 
to the footy show. We celebrate one man, one big man, on his 200th appearance. And you've got to admit, Big Willis has been pretty sharp over his double century. An analyst, force. Analysis. Analyst, analysis. Not, you're not on dialysis. Analyst, what's the f***ing word? And after a lot of dodgy superheroes on the show over the years, finally, we've landed the real deal. Hughes Jackman. Yep, tonight he and Gaz go one on one. I'm a virgin. Mate, Mate, yeah. Gary, it's easy. So just relax, all your questions, you've got 30 seconds. <laughs> and the story that's got the whole country saying. That's what I'm talking about! We cross live to Croft as he embarks on his big footy comeback in Ordinga, South Australia. Speaking of Ordinga, look out! It's Sam on Street Talk Starkers. Yep, the foresail is full frontal at the town's nude beach. Why would I be doing this? All right, if this sort of SBS-style stuff does it for you, stick around. If not, Damo's on too with some news you do not want to miss. What do you think about that, Tony? <laughs> That's all tonight on The Footy Show. Welcome back to the Footy Show. Well, it is a very, very special night tonight. Never before in the history of this show. It's into its 21st year has someone managed to put together 200 unbelievable appearances on the panel. I don't think there's been a more popular member of the Footy Show panel in its history. Please welcome, on this grand occasion, the one and only, Bill Brownlow. Hey! Yeah, I am, to be honest, Gary. It's a big moment for me. <laughs> no, look, uh, I've been a team player all my life. I've done, I've been a decoy. I've done everything for, yeah. for you and the show. Yeah. So tonight, it's all about me, me, yeah. me, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I might even do a bit of hosting later on, because oh. it looks easy what? over there. Oh. I'm yeah. going to host. I'm going to come over and host the show, because old Harry Gary just sits there and goes, hurry up, hurry up, we're running late, or in and out of breaks, which oh, is easy, oh, sponsors. Yeah. And old Jim just sits there and laughs. He <laughs> 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 does this one, and so he's no good either, and introduces uh, music acts and gets them wrong. So uh, I'm going to come over and host. All right, so when was the first panel? I'll take us back, 1995. Five. That was your first and appearance. I think well, we might even I, have it here, Bill. Was I travelling all right? I was in grade Let's six. A new grade face six. to our footy show panel from the Geelong Football Club, oh. Billy Brown. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Oh, oh, have a look at you. What was that? Is that hair? Are we still going around then? Yes, look at the hair. Yeah, thanks, no. Eddie. It's uh, very well, good to be here. What did you weigh then? About uh, 95, 96 kilos and just had the dimples and was quite cute, wasn't I? <laughs> what do you weigh now? Oh, 125. But that's all right. But just the hair's gone back and the guts has gone out. And 21 years, or 20 years down the track, I mean, did you realise or think that you'd be so big? I mean, so huge in the media. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just, uh, I fall in behind you three because the old Foster's a great man over there, but it's a bit of fun and I like to go out with the people and I've got my old mate here, the wheel, <laughs> which I used to go out with and we had some fun there and got very, very pissed at a lot of times. <laughs> and uh, it's good to have the old mate here. So. Yeah. Well, we're going to, look, we're going to reminisce throughout the night. We're going to have a look at some of your finest moments <laughs> oh, and shit. we're going to give the, uh, the our audience the opportunity also to vote on that. That's a little later, but... <laughs> Some things just grab your uh, uh, fancy. This is one of my favourites, <laughs> Bill. We said, I crossed to you. I think well, you were doing the wheel at some stage. And, uh, well, just have a look for the missing tooth. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, he's done it. 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 So that just kept going. Oh, it must go long. A professional mate just kept going. I just had it capped and it wasn't fitting properly. No, obviously. No, it would appear not built. I think you swallowed it. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you what you need to do. Uh, footyshow.com.au. Yes. Get online. We've got, I think, six or seven of the most famous moments of Ooh. Bill on the footy show over the 15 years. So get online yes. and vote. At the end of the show, we'll rank them. Gary and I are of the opinion that there's one that's a long way ahead and we haven't even casted a vote yet. Out. <laughs> anyway, that'll come later on to footyshow.com.au to vote for your favourite Billy Brownless moment over the 200 panels. All right, get on and have a vote. Let's have a look at his old side taking oh. on North Melbourne come uh, on. tomorrow night down at Scoop Stadium. This is a massive game. The old Cats fourth on the ladder went down to Frio by 32 points. Stevie J oh. out, suspended Will. Taylor Hunt's been dropped. Stokes and Stringer come back into the side. Hawkins kicked three goals, but uh, they never really looked like winning against Frio, so they want to bounce back at home. But they're coming up against the Kangas, Jimmy Boyd. Kangas! Seventh on the ladder, five wins, three losses. Back into some very good form last week. 87-point victory over the Brisbane Lions. Look at Boomer there. Just gets better with age. Ferrito comes in and uh, McMahon is out, omitted. I reckon North heading down the highway. Uh, Dice would fancy their chances against the Cats. Yeah, Gaz, I don't know. It'll be, it will be a ripping game, but um, just looking at some of the stats here, Geelong have won 45 of their past 47 games at home, so... You know, it's a massive stat and they're travelling quite well again this year, so I'll, I'll go Geelong. Ooh, good day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah look, um, when I played at North, we had a win down there and they tend to play the, game, the ground really well. And I think if North can get the ball inside 50 a bit more, I'm going to give them a chance. So I'm going to give the Kangas a chance to win well, this one. Yeah. 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 Cats at home, they've got to win this one. They've got to bounce back and Did good to see. Did you have a chat to Stevie or what? Well, he wanted to appeal it, I think you'll find, because it was he thought there wasn't a lot in it. You're just breaking a story here. Do you realise oh. that? Yeah. Uh, it's my 200th guess. <laughs> uh, no, no, uh, I think he would like to, but the, they didn't want to lose him for two weeks, so they went against it. But it wasn't a headbutt. No, it's a push. It's, no, no force in it. Um, people are talking about how, game the, uh, how bad the game's going, struggling, crowds are down, the game is boring. Have a look at these bits of vision we've pulled out here, Gaz. One of uh, Frio's greatest and proudest moments. F uh, Pav's played his 300th game and look, Roscoe! Hey, Roscoe, what are you doing? <laughs> Ross! <laughs> He's, Roscoe Lyons fallen asleep. He did, yeah. And yep. then, of course, uh, Mark Robinson on uh, AFL 360 the other night. He's looking tired. Have a look at Robbo. Oh, He's right. looking a bit tired there. He's bored with the game. Yeah. Yeah, have a look at him. Sound asleep, this <laughs> Robbo. Come on, Robbo. Come on, Robbo. Come on, Robbo. Or um, David King was talking about stats again. And our old favourite, our old favourite is <laughs> Lee Matthews, our weekend at Booney. Oh, Look at old <laughs> Lee Matthews. He's oh. a legend of the game, guys. I know he's... He looks... Is he still with us? He's a legend of the game. I know, we love Lee Matthews. Needed but nudge, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he just needed a big bucket of cold water. <laughs> so, hey, um, Foss. Yeah. Uh, going to get your thoughts on this game. You're on the team. You, uh, yeah, I know you are. Uh, but uh, great news for the Kangaroos fans that uh, Todd Goldstein, who you've had a look at closely, uh, has uh, re-signed with the club to the end of 2016. A free agent this year. It's great to have Goldie uh, commit to the club, and he is a very, very good footballer. Oh yeah. T <laughs> take it away. That's uh, fantastic news, Jim, that it he is. signed on. Um, <laughs> now this, uh, incidentally, um, uh, Josh, I think you said they've uh, won 45 of their last 47 games. I've got a feeling the only two games they have lost to have been North Melbourne. North Melbourne, yes. Well, and, um, uh, Freo beat them last year. And Port, uh, I would have appealed that with uh, Johnson. Yeah. Uh, our friend, Ryan... Crowley. Crowley, yep. He rushed into him and all John did was stick his head out and he just ran into him. If you're going to charge at someone, uh, the buyer beware that you're running into someone who might just not accept it. Now that's A and B. Mm -hmm. This is the 50th 
anniversary of the Blue in the Race. Not many people oh. remember this. I was in it when a huge furor broke out in the Geelong race. And it's an anniversary of it. And the North Melbourne, Alan, Man Alan Aylett, yeah. Albert Mantello, Doug Way, they're all going down. All the people oh. who are still mm. living. Yeah. I'm living, but I'm not going down to it. I was in it. <laughs> uh, are you going I'm living. Jeff Rosnow uh, said something derogatory to Alan Killigrew yeah. and uh, uh, went to court, in fact, over it. And uh, so that's the 50th... So they're having a dinner tomorrow night? They are. Why don't well, well, you go down, Foss? Because uh, I'm going to Adelaide, Bill. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, too. Right. So I, I tell you what, I don't know if John can beat North Melbourne down there. I'm only going on the fact that it's at home, but I don't think Geelong are playing great at the minute. Well, no. Gaz, before we get to your thoughts on this game, I need to do, uh, quickly mention Sportsbet, one of our great partners, of course, here on the footy show. The money back specials are flying. Our unique markets that focus on players' numbers. For example, Little Boom Boom, the great man Boomer Harvey, wearing 29 on his jumper this uh, week, of course, or every week. If he gathers 29 or more, sports better offering a price of $3.50. Uh, so that's decent that's money. Uh, yeah, $3.50, 29 or more for the little champ. Check out the AFL number specials market this week for others, covering Jack Revolt, Travis Cloak, Bryce Gibbs, plenty more conditions apply. Visit sportsbet.com.au for further details and always gamble with much more. I don't know about you again. I don't know about them or folk or the viewer. I'm starting to get butterflies. Why? Well, uh, one of the all-time key interviews coming oh, yes. up with Gary <laughs> with <is>. an international <laughs> Hollywood superstar yeah, and uh, yeah. the are, man handles it, I'm told, you with are, a plomb. You and are a peanut and, and he's still got the brace in bits because he didn't get asked to do it. That's, that's right. I accompanied himself yes. out in the car and I sat there and I said, go in and have a chat to him if you need a backup. <laughs> I sat there for an hour and a half. Out he came, he said it went great. Oh, yeah. I, said, <laughs> I said nothing. I couldn't sneak in to ask just no. the obligatory how are you and you, what do you think of your success, nothing. All right, that's coming up. I'm uh, tipping Geelong, by the way. Well done to the AFL for the scheduling of this game because yes. the Cats have played interstate sides or bottom yeah. of the rung uh, team, so to have the lights there yeah. and get a big game oh, on Friday lights. night against the Kangas is going to be a beauty. Look out, Bill. We are taking oh. a break. Don't go away, though. Damien <laughs> Barrett out next with two massive exclusives, Toby Green and also the Essendon Footy Club. That's Whoa. next on The Footy Show. <laughs> go always. Damien Barrett not far away and he has big, big news that you cannot Ooh. afford to miss. But now it is time on the footy show for Sam's Mailbag. <laughs> Avery, Avery of Strathmore, Sammy Mate. <laughs> Have you seen this video, bro? <laughs> it is bitchin'. <laughs> I presume that means it's epic, Gary. Mm, I think so, yep. The dude in the background. This is it. Very, very strong. West Press in the mix, North Park in the mix. And I think everyone's enjoying just how... Oh, no. <laughs> well, I don't know how it is this year. But I think everyone's enjoying just how... <laughs> well, I don't know how it is this year. Just <laughs> now, that, <laughs> that video has gone, as they say, viral. It was, uh, our, um, yeah. it was on our um, <laughs> grand, final. grand final footy show, came runner-up in the Legends a few years ago. That, we have seen that in 2012, yes. it won yeah. first prize. Oh, Michael Finn gets interviewed <laughs> after the game against Bandura, watch well, out the zone, oh, no. get the interview, he tries to take the hangar and bang. Oh, oh no. no. There he goes. Congratulations, mate. Well done. Oh, thank you. You know how much you've won? $20,000 thanks to <laughs> DP. That is an unbelievable prize. Well, I, I told a lie, it came second, it right. was runner up. Uh, so, how come uh, the world is two years behind? We should get the prize. Uh, it's gone, <laughs> made a lot of money to that man. We're asking for the cheque back, incidentally, because <laughs> he's made a lot of money off it going viral. And uh, the world is two years behind right. us, Gary, as always. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he, Avery, was also wondering if we've seen this video. Oh! oh. <laughs> 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 Once or twice. <laughs> Once or twice. Apparently, if they hadn't seen the kid being dropped, they oh, mightn't have seen yeah, yours. But it, Nigel, yeah. Nigel <laughs> of Melbourne. I love. Now this is true. You won't believe this. I love watching the footy show. We rang Nigel. I love watching the footy show and your antics most of the time. But last week when you ate. <laughs> 
a supposed <laughs> can of hairy dog food a few seconds after you had done that I had to race to my toilet down the hall as I was vomiting everywhere because of that prank uh, now this is me eating the uh, dog food. Yep. Have uh, the dog food. <laughs> oh, that, oh, Nige couldn't handle it. No. Nige, no. Wait, there's more to come. Oh no. Oh. And, and the hair there too. Um, oh. That's it there. <laughs> for dinner, for. <laughs> oh. For dinner, I had cooked a lovely porterhouse steak too with veggies and sautéed onion with gravy and a little bit of juice and I think a comfort of... Um, uh, I am a pensioner and porterhouse is not cheap anymore. The rest of my night was ruined and my dinner ruined too. You, Newman, owe me a porterhouse. <laughs> well, we've got your... Uh, we've got your address, Nige. And uh, allow us... Uh, we've got your address. Allow us... Um, allow us to... Um, <laughs> Uh, this That's is some juice. With oh. this is some juice. This is a comfort of juice. <laughs> uh, we've got your address, and we're going to oh, send no. it to you. <laughs> oh, come on! Come on! Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's <laughs> going. <laughs> that is off to Nigel. That is off to Nigel. So uh, that is off to he. <laughs> right, one more. <laughs> All right, thank you, Gary. <laughs> From Dip D D Diet Ma. Dietmar. 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 Of Alinda. Being Billy's big night, do you have a favourite look alike of him? Do we ever? You have shown over the years. I'd like to see it. Well, I've got four. Can't split them. Um, <laughs> first, yes. the bride. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who'd wear the pants in that relationship? We believe that man might have been a feeder. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sammy. Well, that's, that's quite a thing. A, it's a, a sort of it's a novelty Is thing. To, not a novelty. It's a little kitsch industry that's going on. Is it? You get big people and all you right. feed them, okay. so they almost explode. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, you do. That, there's, okay. there's a show on television called Feeders. All right. um, <laughs> And that was the man who started it. Uh, <laughs> now, this one, we thought, uh, this is a curry puff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. the third, you pick out which one you think is, Bill, but this... <laughs> we oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you want to be Martin now, Tang, oh, 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 wait. Right. Oh. Now, I, this is like jumping out of the frying pan into the fry... Uh, into, into, into the, the fat. Fire, into the fat. And uh, uh, this is an opinion I gave last week oh, about yes, yes, yes. Um, an NFL footballer. Yes. And I think I deserve to... Or not deserve, I think it would require me to uh, comment because it received a lot of comment. It did. Now, I'm not on a crusade and I'm not doing this for... Um, be controversial. This is my opinion. And at the risk of escalating this into a witch hunt about my insecurities, I'd like to respond. First of all, I am not homophobic. Now, you can take that however you like, but... I know there's an old saying, thou protesteth too much, so I won't say any more than that. Damien Barrett raised the matter about an NFL player being drafted in the American football competition and he happened to be gay. And he raised the matter with Brock McLean and I said I was responding to a gratuitous coverage by the media and the subjects involved, the media and the subjects involved, seize every opportunity to push an agenda about people succeeding when they're gay. I stand by that. And then it developed into me saying, no heterosexuals do that when they are drafted. And you said, draftees do kiss. And I said, not blatantly, when the cameras are on them. And I stand by that because I was responding to a news coverage I saw. And I said it was tiresome and it was boring and it was annoying that gay people have to push an agenda when it's not necessary. Do we not realise there are gay people doing great things out there and the agenda always takes precedent over what they're in the news for in the first place? And then someone said because uh, we got plenty of response to this, 
that Gary Ablett, when he won the Brownlow Medal, he kissed his partner, who happened to be a woman, but that's irrelevant. And uh, my point is that Gary Ablett won the most prestig prestigious sporting award in the country, the Brownlow Medal. That is the most prestigious sporting award you can win. And they showed him kissing his girlfriend, fair enough, and that was it. They didn't say he was a heterosexual or anything. My point about the man being inducted was that he was picked number 250 or something in the NFL draft, and the whole angle from the media and the people involved was the fact that they were gay. Do we not understand this people that's gay? What does it matter? It, and then all the, all, the, um, uh, all the talking heads reared there, jumped on the bandwagon and said it was a disgrace what I said. It's nothing to do with gay people. It's, what it's to do with is why do we have to keep mentioning it? They're people like us. It was a commentary on not on being gay. It was a commentary on being who cares. And that's the focus that I was talking about. And I stand by it. And if you think I'm homophobic, fine. I'm not. But when gay people achieve something, why do we have to focus on the fact that they're gay rather than what they've achieved? All right, Samuel, there you go. There's your response. To last week's show, you want to be involved with Sam's Mailbag, you can go to Box 9, Mount Victoria 3001, or you can get on the internet, sams.mailbag at 9.com.au or footyshow.com.au, Bill. Saturday, 1.40 at Spotless Stadium, the Giants take on Richmond. What a big game for the Tigers this one is. And the Giants have won their last two games at Spotless. And some very good ins here. Gillam, Addison, Sausage, Mumford comes back. Hampton, Trelaw, Townsend and Jeremy Cameron back in. Uh, out goes Hunt, Lamb, uh, Buntine, Frost, Phillips, Haynes and Toby Green with that club suspension. Take on the Tigers! Oh, they've got to win this one. Uh, Thomas Grimes and Matt D come in. Out goes Lloyd Ashbury. Good luck to him. Good young fella. He's hurt his knee. And Voston is out with a finger. Jack Revolt is named there at full forward. So good luck to Jack. Let's hope he can kick some goals. The Tigers must win this game or there's going to be trouble next week. So the Tigers to win this one. Joshy Boy. No, look, uh, I'm going to go against you here, Bill. I'm going to go, go with the Giants, mate. Um, they've been pretty poor defensively the last few weeks, but yep. they brought in some good defenders and Gill Gillum there, who was a hawk, and if they can shore up that end, then I'm pretty confident they can win at home. All right, Doris. Yeah. Yeah, cool. No, I reckon uh, the Tigers are under the pump at the moment. I think they'll respond um, and fix up the Giants. Sausages back. Hey, uh, yes, he is. Well done to Brett Delidio, by the way. Another magnificent well, football. Like Kai Abram Flyer <laughs> plays 200 games. Well done to you, Lids. If we could put to bed once and for all, remember how I say there's no such thing as a milestone game. Yes. You know, don't worry about no, someone playing their hundred. If ever there was a milestone game for Richmond, it was last week uh, for Tom Hafey. Nothing. Gave nothing. Yeah. So please never mention milestone games again. They mean absolutely nothing. And I reckon the Giants might almost beat them myself. Do you? Yeah. Ooh. Well, there was a lot of drama, controversy this week with that. Um Jack Revolt yesterday, who had some things to say that didn't help the cause, and uh, Damien Harbuck at the Richmond Footy Club, disappointed, threatened to drop Jack, but in the end uh, decided to go with him, and that hasn't helped things. Maybe it'll bring them closer together um, in this day Never and age. Never cut your nose off to spite your face. Well, you know, but sometimes you've got to take a stance too, uh, Sammy Boy, but they haven't on this occasion, and I'm sure Jack has learned a pretty valuable lesson out of it all. I think they will win Richmond, but by hell, will they um, have a job on their hands, because they're a very talented GWS side with some big names back. We will move on because this time last week the biggest story in footy was Toby Green, a GWS giant player himself who was involved in an incident at a hotel on Monday night. A lot of speculation about exactly what did take place on that night. Well, tonight we can put it to rest because Damien Barrett joins us, the best newsman in the business bar none. Please welcome him. Yes. Damo, what can you tell us about what took place with Toby Green? Yeah, we can say that the uh, footy show has exclusively obtained the uh, CCTV of the night in question. That was the night where Toby Green was charged by police for a string of offences. Green is innocent until a court decides otherwise. Now, let's take a look at the CCTV. 
What you see there is Toby Green standing at a bar in Zagami's on the night of Monday, May 12. A short time later, he moves to an outside area of the establishment. You can see a crutch in his right hand. We're about to highlight his movements from here by placing a white circle around him. You'll see a crutch fly from left to right of screen and then see Green appear to give his drink to somebody before moving toward an altercation. And this is where it is understood police will allege punches were thrown. A group continues to scuffle. Green is pulled out of the altercation. He's again drawn into the altercation where, again, it is understood that police will allege punches were thrown. And we are running this vision unedited. Green appears to move around the fringes of the altercation before approaching another group. The altercation's still going there. He approaches the other group and he then decides to pick up his crutch and, and leave with his group. As you saw, that incident was about a minute long. Again, Green is innocent until the court decides otherwise. Police have charged him with a string of offences, including intentionally causing serious injury, recklessly causing injury, a fray and four various assault charges. I know the answer's before the courts, of course, so you're limited in what we can and can't say. Um, what happens here from here? We know he's got the five-game suspension, been fined $5,000 by the club. That's not relating to not this Not related situation. at all to that. Uh, September 25, the uh, matter will appear in the Melbourne Magistrates Court. OK, uh, we'll move on. Essendon on Tuesday night, a, uh, well, a secret meeting between parents, players and the footy club uh, to discuss, we would imagine, the Asada situation, what took place there. Uh, only one media man there, and that was you, Damo. Had cameras rolling. Big night. Yeah, look, we can see uh, various people, various parents rolling up. It, it was a gathering of, of players, of parents of players. We see there Neil Craig from the footy club, Rob Kerr from the footy club, David Grace QC. Tony Hargrave's there. We'll get to him in a moment there. That's Xavier Campbell and Paul Little. We'll hear from Paul Little in a, in a moment as well. What's now very evident is that the club is preparing for the worst. And then in a major revelation, the, the club has committed to paying all the legal costs that, that, that are going to be associated in this matter on behalf of the players. That was decided that, that, on Tuesday night. That was decided and revealed to the players and the parents on Tuesday night. And we'll reveal that uh, legal posse soon. It was uh, the AFLPA council, uh, Brett Murphy and Bernie Shinners will be part of that group. David Grace, as we said. Tony Hargraves, who, interestingly, up until very, very recently, was representing the club in this Asada matter. He's now effectively jumped the fence and is representing the players. Another guy by the name of uh, Ben Isles, very, very well versed in representing matters relating to Asada and performance enhancing uh, issues. The club is paying for all of it. And after the meeting, uh, Ian Prendergast, the head of the AFL Players Association, he stopped uh, to, with us to have a, a chat. For the first time, went on camera to outline what could happen in the event that players did receive show cause notices. Purely just to provide um, players and, and parents with... Uh an update on, on uh, the preparation we're doing in the event that uh, show cause notices are issued. Yeah, I think it's important that we keep um, everybody involved uh, updated. So, yeah, we'll focus on making sure that information gets passed on to the 17 past players uh, who have since left the club as well. That's Ian Prendergast there. The club also wanted to present its side of the case when it knew we were there, and Paul Little was the man who did that. You'll see here and hear here that his language has changed on this matter, and you'll also notice that he does volunteer the word infraction. Just tried to keep the parents informed about what the options are and what may or may not happen. So we're just trying to be, um, I guess, well, well prepared for, for any outcome. Yep. And what are the options for the parents and the players? Well, the, the options are um, uh, to deal with these infraction notices uh, when and if they arrive. And um, I think from our point of view, um, we tried very hard to keep uh, the players protected from a lot of this speculation because it is harmful and, and it flows down through the families. And that's what we're trying to address with the parents. That's Paul Little after a long meeting there with uh, players initially, then parents and also the legal counsel. Dyson, you were part of the, the meeting that took place before the parents arrived there at, at uh, a Tuesday night. What is it you can tell us about what was said to you that night? Yeah, Damon, well, I suppose it was... Um, the club have been fantastic in being on the front foot and, I suppose, uh, sharing the information that they have towards players and parents. Um, and really, it was, as Ian Prendergast said, it was, uh, I suppose, uh, an update on the process that may be taken or, I suppose, paths that we can take 
um, if things were to arise. The, the, it's now very clear that the club is going to be paying the, the total cost associated with what happens next. Uh, that was made evident to you on the night? Uh, yes, that was. Um, you know, obviously, we're all speaking hypothetically here if things do occur, but uh, the club have put in uh, the best legal team possible and um, you know, we have full trust in them. If things to, were to occur, that they would do the best they could for the players. The information I'm getting out today and, and since Tuesday night is that every single player, should he receive a show cause notice, will defend it to the hilt. Is that the feeling within the playing group? Yeah, I, I suppose, as I said, Damo, it's all hypothetical, mate. And, um, I certainly think that we will leave it in the legal team's hands and they can make the correct decision and, uh, along with the players as well. And, um, you know, the club has certainly put the best team in place to, to help us. Dice, can I, can I ask you uh, personally, how hard has it been? I mean, your form, not your form personally, but the club's form, which started so well, has dropped off. The suspicion is that it is weighing heavily on the minds of the playing group. I mean, is it something that you think about often, your parents have been dragged back into it and brought into it again on Tuesday night. Yep. I mean, how hard is it to deal with all this? Well, look, you'd be, you'd be silly not to say that it doesn't affect you in any way. Um, it's obviously going to have some sort of effect and it does affect boys differently to others. Um, personally, it hasn't had a massive, uh, I suppose, uh, effect on the way um, I've thought about it. It's not in the forefront of my mind all the time, but all I know is that when everyone is at the club, we're there to train hard, no one thinks about it, doesn't affect your game day and you know I've said it before the best thing is for the players to be around each other in that environment at the club and um, you know we're still loving it still loving playing footy and um, you know it's uh you know, it's, it's something that we have to deal with. We've dealt with it for a long time. We're going to continue to, to fight. And last one, I know it's hard, but is, is it when you are away from the club and you're in your quiet time, has it ever occurred to you that, you know, I mean, we heard Paul Little for the first time to say when and if infraction notices come to the players. Has it crossed your mind that the possibility may arise? It certainly has, yeah, certainly. It, you know, that it, it, this may happen, you know. And um, as I said, the club are dealing for the worst case scenarios and... Um, they're across it all and have been open and um, towards the players and parents and you know. Oh, sort of well, we wish you well, mate. Of mm. course, and we thank you for your honesty and your openness, uh, Damo. Before we let you go, the AFL uh, under investigation for yeah, we, price. We, we can break another significant story, guys, before we do go tonight, and that is that the AFL is being investigated by the consumer watchdog, the ACCC, over its variable ticket pricing uh, strategy. It's yet another issue for Gillan McLaughlin to deal with as he steps in to replace Andrew Demetrio. We know crowds are down in Melbourne. We know that they have rallied or railed against the ticket pricing. There has been an official complaint registered with the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. It has been followed up and the AFL has acknowledged this story to us tonight. They've confirmed that they have met with the ACCC and they welcome the opportunity to clarify the situation. But it is significant that the uh, consumer watchdog looking into this variable ticket pricing strategy. Well, we can't let you go before the old Foss has uh, his say. Here's an opinion yes, from please. your humble correspondent. Mm -hmm. That's what I give opinions. Yep. This Essendon thing, don't you interrupt me, a mammoth. This Essendon <laughs> thing is the greatest debacle and charade yeah, perpetrated we, we in the is. Australian sports mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. And Asada have the temerity to hand down a finding, a finding without, as I understand it, not even interviewing the main proponent of this, and that's Stephen Dank. Mm. It's an absolute disgrace, and why, uh, why this is, uh, it is a disgrace. All right, well, thanks, Sarah, and well thank said. Damien Barrett for well joining said. us tonight with uh, <laughs> Yes, we're going to take a little break on the pre show. Well done, Damien. Well Amazing. Uh, Bag of news there. After the break, we're going to get to Shane Crawford live Wee! in Ordinga. <laughs> there he is, there he is. Yes. our man, King of the Kids. He's Ordinga. coming back to football this weekend. We're speaking to him after this. <laughs> Australians, I'll be singing that right here on Saturday, and let's hope we'll be singing the club theme song. Mind you, no one knows the words to it, so that should be interesting if they get up. Go Sharks! Go Sharks! Do you know the words to this? Go Sharks! Go Sharks! I presume, as I said, you only sing the song when you win. Or when I'm pissed. <laughs> Thank you, Kev. And what a thriving metropolis. Uh, is this the main street? Yeah, it's, it is. Uh, 50 metres of bitumen road Yeah, here. that's it. <laughs> Has oh. it got a tune? What's it to the tune of? I... Oh, God. Coming down to watch Shane play on Saturday? Shane Crawford? 
Shane Crawford, the Norm Smith medalist, the Brownlow medalist. Shane Crawford. Ooh. And sir, are you the pie maker? No, this lady right. is. You look like you're the tester. Oh, the tester. tester. It's a grand old flag, oh, is that it? Oh, that's not. <laughs> well, what's the go on? I'm stuff that I know. I should, I'm the oldest one in the club and I don't know the bloody song. Da 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 Yes, old Inga, a beautiful spot about 45 minutes south of Adelaide is going to erupt this weekend when Shane Crawford, one of the best players of the modern era, 300 games, premiership for the uh, Hawks, of course, Brownlow medalist, makes his comeback against O'Sullivan Beats Lonsdale. Mm. And we understand the interest has been extraordinary. So let's cross on a link now to the great man at the Ordinger Footy Club. Sh Shane, welcome. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's going off here. Ordinger. They're on the source, and we've got a game, a big game in a couple of days. Settle down. Hey, Shut uh, up. Shane, Settle down. You uh, trained, as I understand it, today with the group. How's it all going? We did. We had a training run. It all went really well. The team was up and about. Oh, Dinga! We're ready to rock and roll. The skills, not too bad. I'll tell you what, there's a great vibe. Beautiful town, lots of lovely people. And it's wonderful to be here, Gary. And I'll tell you what, I'm a little worried about my hamstrings at the moment because I know there's going to be a lot of cameras and you wouldn't want to be on TV doing a hamstring, would you, Gary? Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Now, would you like to meet some of my teammates? Uh, yeah, all right. Would yeah, you like to meet it. some of my teammates? Let's meet them. Because the first what? one I'd love to introduce. What? No, I'd love what? to introduce you to Zach, who's going to play on ball. <laughs> <laughs> and Zach, you're an on baller. And if the opposition come at me, what are you going to do? Shane, if you, I'm going to be happy with Samurai. Fire! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> <laughs> Shane, uh, have yes. you, Shane, have you been... No. Shut up, Shane. Shane, have you been okay. drinking... Have you been... Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> Here we are. It's all pretty good. That went up for the ruck, and as he went up for the ruck, he <laughs> swallowed the bee. But it won't be happening this week. That is my plan of attack. Good, have a great match. Uh, it's all yeah, happening. And yes, this is where I'm staying. He's Des. on fire. Ah! Come on, Des, we're sleeping together tonight. It's going to be a beauty. It's the bloody worst thing I've done in my bloody life, Sam. <laughs> I'll tell you, Sam, you got to get yours when you come across. You should have adopted this kid out years ago. <laughs> hey, He's a bloody like a hey, seizure what are you doing? You're bloody right. Now, Shane, and I'll can tell I ask you a question? A little bit of rice at home, a bit of home movies, <laughs> and he'll be all right. Show my true movies. Shut up, Des! Shut up! <laughs> Shane, I want to ask you a serious question. No, before you do. Have you been drinking tonight or not? Have we been drinking tonight? I've lined up a few shots for you, Sally. Goodbye! Goodbye! She is on Madison Beach. God help me! All right, off you go, Shane. There he is. This is uh, a man who has won a premiership and a brand new medal. He's lost his mind. He has. He has lost his mind. He's the king of the kids with the operative word on kids. He is just nothing but a practising amoeba. What I do know is that the interest over um, surrounding that game on Saturday against the uh, Sullivan Beach Lonsdale has yes. been enormous. Now, the results haven't been great. The round one, they lost by 157. Round two, they lost by 300. Low water mark. Uh, they bounced.
us back in no round water. three, Gibbo. Just went down by 254. Strong yeah. out. Uh, Marion, I don't know what happened in round four. They only lost by five. That's yeah, they won the 12s up. Had a real good result in round five. Yes. Had to buy. Uh, round six went down by 144. And last week, oh. the coach sent a text message to Shane and said, Really happy with the w way we played. They only lost by 137. <laughs> <laughs> so there's improvement there. Gary. So they're getting better. Well, what, tell you what, what happens if he? What happens if? It, I hate. To, what happens if the boy gets him over the line? Oh, oh be magnificent! Well, be great. His all legacy will sharks. grow. I tell you what else is going to happen, and that is the team will have the greatest incentive of all time. And that is our man here, the enforcer, Ooh. is being choppered in oh, no. to sing the national anthem no. prior to the start oh. of the game. He is arriving <laughs> like a phoenix in a helicopter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at it. Look at it. Oh, I do. Give me no, a quick a bit of a... Australians all let us... No, 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 no. I just got to brush up on the words. He did have a slight hamstring strain, Gibbo. That is the news over the past two or three weeks. He's been at the Hawthorne Physio quite uh, a bit in the past couple of weeks but the he rang the physio with his symptoms and he said you think I should play and he said no <laughs> so yeah, well, he was he's, uh, playing and he got through training he's yeah. hoping he just play a nice easy roll across half back but when you look at those scores I think the back line's going to be a disaster yeah, area for him it's going to be a massive game and, and you'll be there and you'll be there yes I've got to guess what I've got to do <laughs> what? eat hamburgers yes. and drink nice cold frothies yes. and they better be Carlton yeah. Draft yeah. meat tray well Bill meat tray meat I'll draw tray. on a meat tray yeah. I'll do that <laughs> take the wheel I'll and spin the wheel. Yeah, yeah, and on not? Saturday night, you're going to have a little chat to the group. Yeah, we're doing a sporty. Oh, Sam, fantastic. you'll be still there. Uh, yeah, no, I could. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Casey, no, we'll be, Casey I'll... Chopper's out. I do believe that there has been another special guest that's oh. been uh, oh. lassoed into Who's here that? at the Sportsman's Night. Who? One and only Warwick Kappa's going. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Oh. Well, you've got to come. You're his best mate. Kappa! Kappa! It's... It's my prediction that the rotors on the chopper won't even stop. The force will sing yeah. the song and then hop straight <laughs> straight. <laughs> hey, Port Adelaide take on all. Yeah. This is a sizable game. Adelaide Oval Saturday night. The Port Adelaide Footy Club could not be any hotter at the moment. And uh, Lobie comes back in. Of course, a very important part of their lineup. They are flying with a capital F. And they play beautiful football at the Adelaide Oval. Hawthorne. Welcoming back some important people because they've lost important people like Gibb and Cyril, of course, Ruff. and also Ruff goes out, but Hodgie's back the star. Shields, Suli, our man does beautiful work Sexy. after hours, Ooh. and Big Sexy. <laughs> so uh, they're ready to go, the Hawks. Uh, Gibb, you've got some big players out, including your big defenders. You're not playing, Brian Lake's not playing. Yeah, but as you said, we've got Hodgie back, and uh, it's good that Suli's back for his first game of the year. And Look, the way we play our footy, we don't rely on a few individuals and that's the way Clarko's brought us up and, and, you know, over the last few years we've always played that line and towed that line and there's been various games where we had Bud and Cyril and all those guys out and managed to win. So, no doubt that the, uh, the other guys can uh, get out there, play as a unit and put in a really strong performance. Bill? Yes, and on Saturday, Port and Hawthorne will be playing for the Zadie Trophy this year. Hawthorne have won it the last three times, so good luck to Port. And also, uh, both teams will be wearing rainbow boot laces, just like that, to help raise awareness for Zadie's Rainbow Foundation, <laughs> organ and tissue donation campaign. For more info, there it is there, zadie.org. Zadie.org. Um, and oh, and just on that, uh, good friends at Sportsbet, guys. Yeah. They've kicked in ten thousand oh, dollars no. already. Oh, ten thousand dollar donation. So thanks to Sportsbet. There. You know who's going to win this, guys? Port Adelaide at home. The they are hot, hot, hot. This will be right uh, up Clarko's alley, yeah. guys. He will have had the troops bunkered down. Us against them, big names out. I reckon he'll be setting himself for this. Yeah, it should be another cracking game, boys. But um, I'm loving the work of Chad Wingard and Ollie Wines. A couple yes. of fantastic young players. Um, and I, I actually think Port will take the track. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I Every time I uh, see a game at the Adelaide Oval, I say the winner is the ground. Terry Lindbrom from Vegas took yes. me to the ground. It is absolutely... They are cock-a-hoop in Adelaide. It has put them on the map. It is the best thing that's ever happened to Adelaide. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd start relying on some individuals if I was you. I wouldn't worry about the team game, mate. You're not <laughs> going... To, I'd start yeah. getting yeah. a couple of people to put in, and I think uh, the uh, power yeah. will take them yeah. to the cleaners. I think it's going to be an unbelievable Sorry. game of footy. Uh, Hawthorne will be so competitive, but I can't tip against Port Adelaide over there, uh, especially. So I think they'll win. We're yeah. going to take a break. Don't go away. We've got the Nude Street Talk coming and out. And still. best interview and ever in the history. <laughs> Johnny yes. Carson, yes. Ed Murrow, huge. Uh, Walter Cronkite, World exclusive. name them.
Michael Parkinson, none of them can yeah. touch our man. David Frost. Renee Brown. Here we are. Hugh Jackman <laughs> comes up next on the footy show. <laughs> to the footy show. Gary goes one-on-one -on -one with the biggest movie actor on the planet. That's coming up shortly, but just a reminder to vote online, footyshow.com.au. There it is. For your favourite Bill Brownless moment yes. of all time. We're going to get to them a little later on. Bill, what are you doing? I'm sitting here. I'm hosting that night. It's my 200. So, Gazza, you're over there in the fat chair. And <laughs> I feel cranky already. Yeah. What's going on, Jim? We're running late. Come on. <laughs> no, we're going to have a look at this game. Let's go straight to the game. Gold Coast taking on the Western Bulldogs. <laughs> Metropolitan Stadium. And the Gold Coast Suns are flying. They're 6 and 2. And Matera, Ablett, and Lynch all got four last week. In comes Hutchins, Taylor, and. Kardashian <laughs> on an extended bench. Luke Russell oh, plays oh, his 50 no. game. Takes on the mighty Western Bulldogs. Oh, and Woods, Jordan Ruffin, Stevens, Wallace Smith, all that. And Bonta Pally come in. How? Hey, he's got the big hooter. Out goes Tom Williams, Jones, <laughs> Johannesson, and Dixon's got a pectoral. Very good game, this. Who's going to play on Gary Ablett Gaz and who's going to win, please? Oh, well, Bill, uh, boys. I think Gold Coast will win up there at Mitchell Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, we've got the night. <laughs> yeah, no, Gold Coast at home. Uh, as you said, Ablett's been in scintillating form. Who plays on him, please? Doesn't matter, mate. He still runs out and does what he wants every week, so wouldn't even bother tagging him. He's that good. Good work. Yep. I Harry? think uh, picking might go to Ablett for you, Bill, um, but I reckon... Uh, Sons will take take it out. Orville. Orville. I, as I do in the breaks, I go and chat to the unwashed. And uh, on table two here, the Repco boys, they said, this is about as good a look-alike as you can ever oh, get. Oh, there it is. Uh, have your good self, Bill. That's it, Bill. Who's that? Me. That's yeah. you, you fat fool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get one of you, Mr. you old Mr. Obesity. What, now, now, I'll tell you... Oh, oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like a swine, you are. A hog. A hog. A hog. A hog. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Sam, there's a 200th show. Yes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Yeah. Hog. Hog, 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 hog. Um, Come on, old fossil uh, Do you know bag? what the Gold Coast Suns will do? What? Listen to this. Vith yes. I Thay. They'll play in a preliminary final. Ooh. Ooh. Hard to you, argue. You, uh, they Hard will play argue. in the preliminary final. I don't think final. they will, but they'll be... Uh, I will not they'll play finals. No, they'll they'll play... I don't think they will either. Oh, Gary. Sorry, Bill. They'll play fine. <laughs> All right. Hey, um, you're, now, we've got to introduce something here. Do you want to do it? A world do exclusive, this. I well, saw it reported as a world exclusive. Well, you better do it because oh, it's important. This is a pump. <laughs> <laughs> the film is called X-Men Days of Future Past. It is in cinemas today and last week. Our man, Gary Lyon, caught up with one of the Oof. hottest movie stars oh, yes. on the planet, yes. if you don't mind. Yeah. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Gary yeah. Lyon, yeah. one on one, <laughs> with Hugh Jackman. Way to guide us, to bring us together, the X-Men. We need your help. Tell whoever it was that sent you that I'm busy. The person who sent me was you. Hey, uh, mate, the footy show thanks you, first of all. My pleasure, mate. It's good to see you again. Uh, it's great to see you. Uh, I saw the movie yesterday, so yeah. congratulations on that. That thanks, was mate. outstanding. Thank you, mate. There's a shot of you ripped, and yep. you, just tell me about that, please, because well, I'm going to get this out of the road off the top. It, it, it embarrassed correct. all of us. <laughs> well, I, I made the mistake of seeing it for the first time with my daughter, who's eight, and I forgot about that scene. She goes, Dad, please, put some undies on. <laughs> I, but it was actually scripted for me to wear undies. Now, Aussies will understand this. They were like, well, you got to get out of bed with underwear on. I said, I'm sorry, I don't know about you guys, but in Australia, if you're in bed with a really hot girl, <laughs> you don't get out with boxer shorts on. That That's basically grounds for no callback. And when you're looking like that, mate, you don't get out no, of bed with true. There was a scene, actually, in the scene, there's a mirror in front of me where he's sort of looking and noticing that he looks younger and all of that. And I remember just before he rolled, I said out loud, I said, well, never going to look like this again. I mean, it took what, me about two years to get ready for that. Is that, is that right? I mean, that's yeah. the question. I mean, it, it was spectacular. So yeah. physically, how, how much training were you doing? Uh, two and a half hours a day, two like in two sessions. And as you know, 
it's the diet thing. I mean, well, when you were playing, you probably didn't worry about what you ate because you're training non-stop. I never looked like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> From our point of view, sports people, exports, it's all about the numbers, what you can bench and all this. Yeah, now, right. I've done the research. Is yeah. it 140 on the bench? KG, my bet, that's probably my best. But the, the thing that was hardest for me, a guy with skinny legs, is the deadlifting and the squats. Did you used to do all of that? Uh, not, not to that extent. <laughs> <laughs> Injuries along the way? Did I read you nearly, you nearly sort of... Sliced the them off. Is that yeah, true? There was, I was running down a, a hallway in, on film, naked, and the AD was playing a prank on me. So as I came around this tunnel, which was built in the studio, 30, all the girls were on set, from makeup to hair to script supervisor, all of them were waiting there and waving $5 bills at me. No. And I literally, of course, first thing you do, wearing clothes, is doing cover. <laughs> I missed. We think that's what happened to Billy Brownless, mate. <laughs> <laughs> we think he might have had the claws at some stage. I'm not going there. On our show, I cop a lot of grief for breaking my leg. I, I, I hope you haven't gone down that path. I haven't. No, it's enormously painful. Really? You know, courageous to come took back a lot from. Of your, took a lot of your speed <laughs> off. Because you were one of the fastest to uh, play well, the game. Sort of stuff. I love the hirsute look. This is the other Dude. thing I cop a lot of grief for. Mate, said, hey, you and me, brother. Hey, the rug. Come on, And, and rug. Big in Hollywood, just tell me. Because I say I'm As I always say, home. girls don't like it. Women love it, no, right? That's it. Your football knowledge and background. Where do your allegiances lie? Is it the West Coast Eagles? I really got into football when I went to the Western Australian Academy of Performing Arts, so 92 to 94. Mm. And I'm sorry, you live in Perth. All you hear about is the West Coast mm. Eagles, pre-Dockers, and they won in 92 and won in 94. Yeah. So I got right into it. I would go out, watch the games, listen on the radio, and then really now my allegiance is to the Sydney Swans, uh, you know, I'm from Sydney, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I love AFL. All my mates give me a hard time in Sydney, but for me, it's. I think it's. It's by far my favourite sport to yeah. watch. It's so brilliant. I love taking people from America to see it. Has it got much of a presence in the states? Are you able to no. get it? Get it and, you can and get find it, it now. You yeah. can get it. You can get the cricket on channel 1007, <laughs> and it's pretty much about 1033. Your beautiful wife Deborah Lee's got yeah. better taste in football sides than you now. She's, she's got true. the Melbourne Allegiance, hasn't she? Well, I'm actually a member of the Melbourne club. My mate, Irving, one of my best mates, yes. hooks me, and my son yeah. is a member. So, well, we're the on the... Melbourne Footy Club? Almost their Melbourne Footy Club. Is that right? I think I've got three years to wait. I'm three oh, years from becoming club. a member. The, the MCC Yeah, members. but both, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, know if, I can get you as a member of the Melbourne Footy Club in about three seconds. Really? <laughs> <laughs> the MCC There's a few vacancies. It's a 20-year waiting list. Hey, yeah, mate, you've been very generous with your time. We've actually brought this in. This is the Footy Show cap. Perfect, now, mate. This is honorary. Um, is it really? Yeah. and This uh, is up there with the baggy green? Yeah, well, it is. It, we, we, we based it on the baggy green, and if you can get one of them, you've really made it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see you, mate. No, I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for so everything. Really Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Chemistry, you could just uh, say it. Mate. Well, it was obvious, and um, you only allowed seven or eight minutes. I had an hour and twenty, so we <laughs> cut that right back down. Yeah. You had you had mm. seven minutes twenty-one. You stuffed around for thirty seconds, so you had six fifty, and straight out the door. Uh, he's a ripping bloke, as you well know, Bill, and he's very generous with his Got time. Me. And I, I thought it came off really I'm, well. I'm with Bill. I thought there were a couple of little fake laughs in there oh. from him. Yeah, well, he's an actor. Sort of humouring <laughs> you. He's an actor, Jim. That's what they do. Is, but, is it? Um, not anyhow, Gary. That is. Honestly, I, I know you think I'm uh, mm -hmm. taking the uh, yeah. mic. That is Oscar stuff. That. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, no, that is extraordinary. Oh, the way you, you delivered up. some of those questions oh, and the intense look, uh, pretending you're interested, Bit of humor. was fantastic. <laughs> Bit of humor I've in. seen you do that up at the Kokoda, taking no notice of anyone <laughs> that was speaking to you and pretending you're enthralled. No, it was great. And I went and saw the movie, and it is, I'm not just gratuitously saying, oh. what are you laughing at? Well, gratuitous, that word again. No, yeah. it was a fantastic film. So get along, it opens today. X Men, Gary, Days yes. of Futures Past. That's Who it. else is That's in it? it. Uh, Halle Berry is in it. Is she? Uh, Jennifer Lawrence is Patrick in it. Patrick Stewart. No, Patrick Stewart's well. in it. It is an absolute belting show. Why didn't you interview right. Halle Berry? In cinemas today, X-Men Days of Future Past. Um, now, Bill, yes. we, uh, before we go, sports bet we need to thank, of yes. course. Over 230 markets on every AFL game. Great friends of ours and Repco. Repco. What an auto store ought to be. Now, Repco. throw to the break, Bill, because Sam is nude and Maslin Beach are next. So get, get it done properly. Are we going to a break? <laughs> Oh, welcome back 
the footy show. Time for a very, very popular segment. Almost three legends. Dyson's here. We're going to jump straight into it. This is the first one. We've got Yarrawonga versus Myrtleford. Have a look at the big red-headed ruckman here. Up it goes. Where he is, old fan of pants. Look at him. Oh, yeah. Nice hang. All right, get out. Nice hang. All right, that was from Johnny Runnels. What have you got, guys? Dirty. Yeah, right right our next one is the absolute He's definition of almost three legends. Big hanger. Hang on. Lands on his neck. Oh, no. New bloody ripper. That's old Wayne Steele from Noble Park. Nice sleep there, nice. Look at it. Up he gets. Yeah, you ripper. No, no good. All right, there we go. This uh, Avondale Heights versus Airport West. Paul Puapo lookalike produces his best work ahead of the World Cup. Have a look at that. Over their head. Straight through. Nice improvisation from little Puap. Bangs it over the head, World Cup uh, style, and hits a goal. I'll do three very nice entries here. Let's go to the audience. Who like number one? Big red headed Mark. Hey. No one. Who like number two? Dice's man. For hey. you. What about number three? The little scissor kick over the head for a goal. Yeah. Nice. What do you think? I reckon the uh, number two takes a chop. Number two is the winner, yeah. and you've won this. Thanks to Sportsbet, our weekly winner takes home $1,000 cash, while our runners up get $500 each. With over 230 markets on every AFL match. All up, that's a $50,000 prize. What about that as a way to kickstart the renovation you always wanted? So if you want to do it right, go where the tradies go. Home, timber and hardware. Ah, uh, send your entries in to Almost Footy Legends, GPO Box 9 Melbourne, 3001. Don't forget, you can now upload your legends directly to our website at footyshow.com.au. The best prizes in football, uh, Bill. Without oh, doubt, Gary, right. best in footy, Jim. I tell you, that's as crisply done as that segment's that been hard. handled for it's a long that time. not that hard, Jim. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Doing the Wayne Rooney kick over his head win. Yeah. yeah. What do you got there, Wayne Willis, before we get to the next game? Now, Foss, you said that was me before, yeah. which was kind of ha-ha funny. I found you. This is you, <laughs> Foss. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> you're, a bit, you're a bit wrinkly. But then you got a bit of work done, you're like a minx cat, <laughs> and now you slowly come back. But that is you, Foss. Uh, a manx cat. Yeah, a minx cat. Not a minx, you idiot, a manx cat. <laughs> Carlton take on Same Adelaide thing. at the MCG. <laughs> the Blues are in need of a win. Don't worry about that. Robinson's out suspended. Ooh. 17th in the comp for disposals, as you can see. Uh, Carazzo is a big in, a very good player, so is Waite. So they get some good players back. Gibbs, we're hearing, is about to re-sign with the club for five years. would be terrific. Adelaide! <laughs> Coming off a magnificent win against the Pies last week. Otten, Lyons and Grigg and Dangerfield, an absolute superstar. And we wish, by the way, before I get your thoughts, Gary, on this game, uh, Blaine Johnson, well, pick 43 in the 2012 uh, draft on debut. If he plays, good luck, young man. Uh, Hep, let's start, start with you. Righty. Um, no, I think Adelaide, uh, fantastic win last week against the Pies. Um, and I think they will win again this week. Gib? Yeah, look, I agree. I think Adelaide are going to get over the line. It's uh, amazed to read that they've only won one out of their past 11 games at the G. So it's a pretty shocking record. So hopefully they can turn that around this, this weekend. Hey, Gary? Um, I think Adelaide, but uh, Jim, we've just been handed a note here and it is very sad news and uh, it's just come to hand here that uh, Wes Lofts, who was one of the all-time greats and a legendary figure of the Carlton Footy Club, has passed away today, age 71. He was a Victorian interstate representative, wow. a 1968 premiership player. Following his retirement, he remained involved with the Carlton Footy Club in an administrative capacity. In 1988, was inducted into the Carlton Hall of Fame. So passed away today, sadly, after an illness. And as I said, one of the biggest names in Carlton history. From all of us at the Footy Show, we extend our sincere condolences to the Lofts family. Yeah, so well that done. is very sad news. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Well done. Legendary administrator, Gans. Yes, as much indeed. as a player. Absolutely. Uh, in the really strong era for the Blues. Uh, Sam? Uh, yeah. Did you say they hadn't won? Not you, Bill. But did you say they hadn't won at the MCG? They won out of their last 11 there. Yeah. Sam? This is at Eddie, isn't yep. it? Yeah. yeah. Why did you say that? No, it's at the MCG. No, it's at the MCG, MCG. mate. That's why. Why has it got Eddie out here? Yeah, I'm not sure. Why, Force? Oh, Miss so print. what's the point of having these? Now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A very good question. Okay, well, look, I'll take that back, Josh, oh. on, the, on, on the fact that I'm wrong. Um, wow. Well, wow. now this will be a willing contest, this. Yep. I, I, I feel that Carlton might do that. Ooh. Oh, yeah. 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 
All right, now, um, next uh, Wednesday... Uh, hang on a second, Bill. Uh, next Wednesday night is an enormous <laughs> night for the Nine Network. Don't worry about that, Willis, for a second. No, First not. up, State of Origin, live from Suncorp Stadium, 7.30pm. Mate against mate, state against state for the hundredth time. Ooh. We're new... 7.30, of course, State of Origin. And after that, well, it's a very oh. special edition of the footy show. All the highlights and lowlights, of course, from Crofts, all Dinger comeback <laughs> and a heartwarming oh. local footy story you do not want to miss. Uh, that is next Wednesday night, 7.30 on 9. Start your night with State of Origin. Finish it with the footy show. Now, Adelaide, by the way, Tim. Bill. Adelaide the win for me. Yeah, well, Bill, oh, just... When we get into the nudie run. Well, no, we're next. Bill, that's why I didn't get your tip from you, because I want a tip, and oh. then I want to throw to the break with the nudie run next from Aldinga Beach. Uh, I'll do that, Jim. Adelaide at the MCG for me. I'm with Sam there. And don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Up next, nude streak talk from the beach with Sam and his little pecker and all <laughs> my greatest moments. <laughs> and you can vote for him ever. 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 <laughs> oh, you got, you got on the break? After the break. <laughs> State of Origin, live Wednesday, 7.30 on 9. Building, renovating or selling? Accent's biggest sale is on now. Furnish your home with up to 30% off curtains, up to 20% off blinds and up to 20% off Venetian blinds. Visit accentblinds.com.au for more great offers. Guys, your premature ejaculation problem could be resolved and overcome with AMI's new Make It Bigger and Last Longer option. Satisfy your partner with a bigger and longer lasting performance. Call now for this incredible solution. 1-800-211-211. Enjoy a bigger and longer lovemaking experience. AMI's breakthrough option is a game changer of massive proportions. One man, one visit, one amazing result. Make it bigger and have longer lasting sex. Call or SMS bigger to 1-800-211-211. Drivers all around Australia tell us why they rely on their American-made Cooper tyres, like Sharon Millard. After only getting 30,000 k's from the original tyres on her RAV, Sharon asked around and was recommended Cooper. So, she switched not only her RAV, but her Prado as well. After clocking up 90,000 k's, she thinks they're brilliant. That's how Sharon saved money and got peace of mind. Like Sharon, find out how Cooper tyres are tested and proven in Australia by calling 1300 Cooper. Here we go. She's off to the shops again. Think she's got a bit of an eye for fashion. The irony is she'll search all the racks for great colours and styles and then look at what she puts me in. It's hardly a designer label, is it? Get better plates for your car. Add some style and colour for a one-off price, starting at just $160. Visit myplates.com.au. The powerful songs and stories of a turbulent time. Now live on stage comes Rolling Thunder Vietnam, an inspiring concert drama. Book now. Down here often to get the kid off? No, never. I might have a run down with you, oh. Nudie, hey? Wouldn't you get a lot of voyeurs coming down to look at those in the unclad it's state? He's a pervert, Sam, like you were when you were younger. Pervert. It's <laughs> charming, isn't it? You're allowed to look at people's bits and pieces, or do you try and just eyeball them? Oh, mate, they're not real flash. They're uh, pretty old and. A lot of them are old. So you, have a, so you have a glance occasionally down at the wedding? Nah, mate, nah. I just glance at myself, mate. I don't really worry about anyone else. So you're a proud man. Can proud you, man, can yeah. Can you yeah. get yourself proud when you're <laughs> down there? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. No, you're a pervert yourself. No, Sam, no. No, no, you're just going down for a bit of a look. I come to see you naked, Sam, and that's about yeah. it. So... Oh, no, well, that wouldn't make you a pervert, <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, 
This feels, this feels natural. Street Talk Mass on Beach, take one. Oh, Jesus. How close was that? Meeting another lad just with yes. nothing on her. This is a new yes. and a different experience for me. So all free these bagging. people... Fr free bagging? Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, Sandy, being no, naked. You fantastic. Yeah? Mate, no, you want to go for a jog? Sorry. You know what? A jog. Jog up the mountain. No, no, I was going to I don't know if I'll go for a jog, mate. <laughs> yeah. No. Lovely. Now, try not aim it at the agates, so you shear them off and I end up becoming a eunuch, all right? In case the camera is on me and I get accused of... I... You having a glance then? Just a little one. Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. <laughs> oh, all right, well, now, will we look each other over and then we'll get on with the questions? Okay. Now, give me a bit of a look. Oh, I do like to be beside the sea. Yeah, I thought he might have been a bit past it, Shane, uh, playing footy still. I tell you where he would be better, he'd be down here. He's got the body of a young Othello. Or a uh, young Spartacus. He looks a bit like. of a smooth cat like you, isn't he? Yeah, mate, um, I, I tell you what, I'm about as smooth as Hessian underwear. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. She's the dog. A absolutely. Dog. Lucas, please, mate, don't go the old plums, please, mate. Yeah, it'd probably be uh, quite interesting seeing this on the football show if yeah. it actually comes apart. I hope no one's filming me from behind, sir. They'll have a full view of me. No. <laughs> The plums aren't hanging down too far, are they? <laughs> Give us a look now. Um, I'm trying to concentrate on the writing. In 1997, a huge blockbuster was made on this very beach. Two people, one romance begins. On one day, on one very special beach. Maslin Beach. Just look at this place, Marcy. This would have been the most beautiful place in the world, Ben. Do you want to get it on? So what it says? I'm doing something you are incapable of, Ben. I'm looking for love. Yeah, and I'm looking to get it on. He's got his hand on me all. Just look at this place, Marcy. Don't put it in my face, Anna. It's only a microphone, no, Marcy. Sorry, but it, you just zap it in there. Well, I can't, I can't hear it. <laughs> I, I can't hear you otherwise. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in slowly. Hang on. Uh, if you've just tuned in, I'm speaking microphone. Just look at this place, Marcy. Hang on. She got down to it and opened her mouth. I don't know what she was thinking she was going to do. Go on. I thought I was going to chew it then. <laughs> I tell you what, I will get firm shortly. Some of the more extraordinary vision we've ever seen on this show. Force. Wasn't a lot of pixels, was it? No. <laughs> what, did they run out of pixels? Oh, I don't know. Uh, do you buy, did you buy them in a box? They Were they out of them working. at uh, Officeworks or something? Budget. Hey, great, great. Well, great sport, Sam Newman, yeah, well, by yeah. the way. Yeah. And everyone on Mesin Beach. <laughs> As you saw at the top, <laughs> the oldest nude beach in Australia, Gary. <laughs> the oldest nudist in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, the most hair. Uh, now, oh, wow. uh, I tell you what else has happened, Gary. Oh, the votes are in oh, oh, for the greatest oh, Bill yeah. Brownless moments of uh, all time on the Footy Show. Right. People have been out of vote. Footyshow.com.au. So we're going to roll through them here, uh, Willis. Well, let's go. And uh, the number six is the uh, cellophane selfie. This is from earlier on this oh, year. I like it. Yeah. We yeah. love this one, yeah. where yeah. Adam Cooney got up with the cellophane yeah. and decided to take to Bill's bond. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> <laughs> we like that. We like that. We thought he ended up looking like Glenn Lazarus, yeah, the brick with eyes. Good. The brick with eyes. All right, and Willis, number yes. five, Thanks. and this is Gary. I think uh, you might have voted here. This is some of the greatest vision we've ever seen. The EJ Witten Legends oh, game, oh, where the big Ryan oh, yeah. has bristles. <laughs> Look at the tweets. Look at the and tweets. Bill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 a nice handball through there from Bristol.
<laughs> got a decent leg between them. No, That's no, it. one leg. All right, number four is uh, the old grand final vision where Bill didn't quite get the job done in the goal square. Oh, Here at 1989. <laughs> 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 uh, 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 Gary only ended up being half a kick between those two sides in an epic grand final. And I still think he's got a case. I reckon it's a goal. a goal, that one. Yeah. John Cleese, the right. goal umpire. So that's number four. Number three, and this is voted by our audience. <laughs> this is the political press conference oh. involving Bill Brown. Let's have a look. Oh, look, I've got to go away and have a good thing about it. Because honestly, uh, that's what I'll do now. I'm just going to talk to a few people uh, and, and uh, have a good thing about it. One of the big issues in North Geelong, literacy with uh, school children, uh, drug abuse. What are the big issues in North Geelong? Uh, yeah, always. But, uh, as you know, I, I'm, I'm, look, I haven't got a great uh, feel of it, and that's what I've got to look at. <laughs> well, one thing you know, Billy, um, um, what's your position on the independence of the Auditor General? <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> Cody? <Kobe? laughs> he does a very good job. Now, oh, now look, uh, look uh, honestly, uh, it was just a bit of a chat, a coffee, nothing great deal said uh, up there, and uh, we'll go from there. What about the separation of powers? Do you endorse that at all, or...? Um... Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ian Cover gave me nothing. What was any of that, Bill? Uh, oh, I still don't know what it is. No, no. I don't think you <laughs> Number two uh, is uh, this is voted by you the skydive oh. from a couple of years ago. Have a look. No, I didn't want to do this. Did not want to do this, Jim. <laughs> 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 But, Gary, Jim. I'm going to let you take us home. Oh, I, mean, I wow. think this is your favourite thing that you've ever seen on television. Uh, there's been 20, 20 years of footy shows, <laughs> and I've been watching television for a long time. I, um, was actually, I was here when this happened, and I had to talk him into doing this particular thing over in Germany, and he was a bit reluctant at yeah. first, but when he got his head around it, uh, oh. worked himself up for the occasion. Yes. Like, uh, it's never been seen before. So this is Bill's nude run <laughs> in Munich. Come on! <laughs> Look at him. Oh, it's not quite. <laughs> 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 And I understand the work in the van, Gary, oh, was oh, extensive. The German sound operator was there that didn't really know who Bill or <laughs> what he was about. Yep. He, he's not been the same yeah. since. No. no. <laughs> you're not allowed to do that in the van. No, no, you're not no, allowed. What do you got over there? Well, we're going to just be a bit oh. serious for a moment because that is great fun. And to, to do television, you need to entertain people. And this man over here, <laughs> on uh, well, most 200 occasions that he sat on the panel, has been the most entertaining. Of all our panel members, he is an out-and-out -out star of the industry. Uh, always takes one for the team. Always prepared to laugh at himself. And uh, yes. we love him, as do all of you people. So, Billy, on behalf of us all, the footy show, this is for you, oh, mate. On 200 you, games, whack that up in the uh, pool. Right. Well done. Now, uh, you might not... That Andrew yeah, Fife did yeah, that. Yeah, that that is absolutely sensational work. You go and have a look at the detail in that. And, Bill, if you don't snap that up and hang it in a house, if you ever get one again, put it somewhere, <laughs> that, is, that is a great it is. piece of memorabilia yes. and magnificently done by a star, Andrew yeah. Fife. Uh, thank him. And uh, thank you, guys. And thank the footy show and Jim and that, Sam oh, and everyone you, up there. Bill, and yeah. Brent and Tim That's and everyone it. else involved. Well, you're not, fantastic. But Bill, you're not retiring. No. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, I thought I might have been finishing up tonight. We'll, we'll get to a break, will we? Uh, we'll go to a break up next. We have... Wrap, um, wrap up, Bill. We're wrapping up. Absolutely nothing. We're going to wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> and like us on Facebook. <laughs> .com forward slash AFL footy show. Be back after this. <laughs> Welcome back to the footy show. Thanks to our very good 
Sports sponsors Nissan, Home Timber and Hardware, Sportsbet and Repco. Unbelievable sponsors there. Thank you very much. Dyson, you got something for us? Yeah, Bill. So uh, here we have these bad boys. Uh, we're going to be wearing these jerseys at the, uh, the Dream Time at the G game next week um, to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the Dream Time at the G. Yep. Um, there's a bit of a competition to design the Guernsey, and that was won by uh, Thomas Day the Third. Um, who's a local Indigenous artist and also cousin of uh, Nathan Lovett Murray. So well good looking done. jumpers. Thank you. And uh, yes, we've got ours here as well. Ours is actually designed by all the Indigenous players at the Hawks along with Jiralala. And um, on the jumper it has every Hawthorne Indigenous player that's played a game for the footy club. And we've got Hillies here and we'll be wearing these next week Brilliant. against GWS. Yeah, so well, good really. down and bicep. Very good. Gaza, Bill down the end there, well done. Well, yeah, thanks. I've got to do... no. Hey, well done, Bill. Great oh. night for you. I've got nothing for you. I thought you were going to rip a couple of arse off. Uh, Bluey's arse off. <laughs> He's a, in in honour of Bill's favourite jokes, Bernie's arse off and Tory's arse off. All said to say well done. <laughs> yeah, and what about Rudy? Too. Oh, yeah, Rudy did too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Sam, well done to you. Good luck over there in Adelaide. Yes, yes. thanks. Yeah. And Bill, yes. you're a superstar. Turn it goes. Yes! yes. 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 Stay to Origin game. See you then.